Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial. And today we are painting Skaven. Yes, we are painting Thanquo and Bone Ripper. This one is for Kataro, legend of the War Hipster community. And we're going to be painting him up today in our Contrast Plus style. And to do that, we have to prime him in grace here, because he's quite cold. It's quite unforgiving. <laughs> Mutant storm fiendy type thing and the first color we're going to be using is a roughly four parts gilliman flesh to one part contrast medium and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the skin just like this now we're going to start down here on the leg because it's the simplest area to do and we're going to kind of try and do this per muscle group now don't worry if you get this over the top of the fur, that's fine. We just want to get this all over. Like this. And when it comes to doing the actual body, because he's all stitched. It gives you those nice little kind of sections in which to aim for in terms of how to get through them nice and smoothly. Now, we're not going to do this over the tail, I should just point out. That's going to be a slightly different colour. And we're not going to do this over, I want to say it's Thank Qual on top. I've just been to the dentist. <laughs> so my, my memory isn't quite spot on. I'm sure we'll figure it out in the next clip. So with that all applied and drying, what we're going to do is we're going to take some dark oath flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of the tail. And with that dark oath flesh applied, we're then going to take some Sonic or Brown and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the fur. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Storm Fiend and Croxagore scales. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the sort of bluish tealy armour. So I'm just going to start just down here. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some wild wood and we're going to apply this over the wood on these bits on the belt. Like so. 
and we're also going to apply this over the top. I've got two more little bits of wood there. But what we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the toenails. Down here and the wrap of this large cable just here. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of the belt. Got a little bit of the belt just in here and in here. And in there, like that. Just a little bit more in there. It's a little bit tricky to get to that one. There we go. So we're gonna apply that to the belt, but we're also gonna apply this over the top of our two remaining large cables here and here. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the metallics across the entirety of Bone Ripper. And this is just so that we can like pick them all out, but also just kind of act as like a quite a nice base coat for all of them. It helps us just figure out where they all are. So with a lot of silver having been applied, there is a couple of areas that are clearly metallic that we haven't done yet, but that's because we've got to shade them first and we've got a couple of other extra colors to add. So. One of those extra colors is going to be some Blood Angels Red. And we're going to apply this over the top of the tabard down here, the collar around his neck, and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our remaining smooth cables. And there's loads of them. All scattered about. So with that done, it might seem like a slightly weird time to do it, but we are going to add some shades. And the first one we're going to add is a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part pterodon turquoise. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the armor. So we need to just bring that down a little bit more. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Caraberg Crimson and we're going to apply this to the recesses of the flesh.
So with that done, the next shade is going to be some Agrax Earth shade. However, we're not going to be shading it pre-existing details here. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be picking out all of the little kind of sort of bandagey wraps, bits of kind of soft. Soft areas. Such as this large one. Just here like that. And we got that little bit under there as well. Mustn't forget that. Like so. We've got little ones scattered around, like that one there. Like so. There's one down here as well. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of his horns here on the top. So with that Agrax Air shade applied, we're back to base coating. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some Mantis Warriors Green and we're going to apply this over the top of the warp crystal. At least I think it's a warp crystal. Back here. Like that. So with that done and drying, what we're going to do is we're going to take two colours, Orc Flesh and Briar Queen Chill. And we're going to apply this to the smoke coming out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking some Orc Flesh. I'm going to apply this right in there. Hence why we haven't done the other metallics just yet. I'm going to bring it out to around about that little corner just there in the smoke. Then I'm going to wash the brush, grab some Briar Queen Chill, apply it there, and then bring it all the way out. Just like that. And of course, I'm going to flip it over and do exactly the same thing. Push the brush, grab that bright green gel. And so with that done, we're then going to take two colours, Caraber, Crimson and Luxion Purple. And we're going to use this as a little bit of blending down here on the tail. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking some Caraber Crimson. And towards the tip of the tail down here, we're going to apply this all the way up to around about there. Like that. We're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to just blend it out a little bit so you get a little bit of that fade going on into the dark earth flesh. And then we're going to grab a little bit of Luxion purple and towards the base of the tail, we're going to add this like that, wash the brush, and then grab a little bit of Carabag Crimson once more just to move those two colours together. And then once again, I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So take that Caribou Crimson first, follow it all the way around to around about there. Wash the brush. Give 
Here's a little blending. I actually need to just grab a little bit of Carabur Crimson. Just grab the top of the tail here. Just missed a little bit. That's okay. Should still be reasonably wet. Yes. And then we're going to wash the brush. Grab that Luxion Purple. And then just add it towards the tip. Wash the brush. A little bit of Carabur Crimson just to smooth things together, like that. With that tail done, what we're gonna do now is take some Gore Grunter fur, and we're gonna apply this over the top of the rat's teeth, just here at the front, and at the bottom, just down there, like that. It's a little bit fiddly. That's okay. And then what we're also going to do, we probably want to go to a smaller brush, but we're going to apply this Gore Grunter fur over the top of the eyes. And with that done, we're then going to take some Shyish purple and we're going to apply this over the top of his tongue. And we're going to apply this right down inside the mouth as well and just in at this angle on the roof of his mouth just like that so with that done, it is now time to add our, well, final base coat, which is gonna be some thinned down Retributor armor. Now, we're gonna be applying this over quite a few details that helps to have the box art open in front of you. But what we're looking for is we're looking for areas like these large kind of bulbous bits. All the weapons. We're looking for any decorative trim such as it is. As decorative as it can be for the Skaven, I suppose. We just want to go all over like this, really. Like I said, it really helps if you have the box art open in front of you to figure out what all of these bits are. We're just going to be going all the way around like this. And once that's done, we'll come back. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on on Bone Ripper. So it's time to add some shades. And the first one we're gonna add is some Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm gonna apply this over the top of all of the gold. I've got a little bit too much there on my brush. And there we go. And now we're gonna get this all over just like this. And what we're also going to do here with the Reichland Flesh Shade He's going to apply this over the top of the red collar around his neck, just here. Like that. And we can also apply this over the tabard as well.
like that. And so with all that Reichland flesh shade applied, we're then going to take some Nuln oil. I'm going to apply this over top of all of the silver. So with that now done, Bone Ripper is at what I would call a War Hipster battle ready, and he's already looking pretty cool. However, we're not going to leave him there. No, of course not. We're going to take him to the next level. I'm going to do this by adding some layers and some highlights. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a layer, and it's going to be a roughly two-part staggered on scale green to one part Sotek green. I'm going to thin this down with sort of three or four parts water. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the armor here, and it's kind of like thinned glaze capacity because we've got that load of water in there and we're looking to just use this to smooth out any inconsistencies add a little bit more richness of color and fix, well, any mistakes that you might have made when doing things like the metallics. If you want this to be a little bit brighter, add a little bit more Sotek green. this mix. In the spirit of re-layering things to pick up any mistakes and smooth out any colours, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Kislev flesh and Pallid Witch flesh, and we're going to use this, thins down with sort of three or four parts water, so it's almost like a glazed consistency, and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the flesh. And this is just going to add a little bit of warmth into any areas where it's a little bit cold, and also going to kind of start the highlighting process here as it is one of the main features of the model So with all of that done, he is now wonderfully pale, but we need to add a little bit of warmth in there. So what we're going to do is going to take our roughly three parts, now I'm medium, to one part Reitland Flesh Shade Mix. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the skin. So with that done, it is now time to add some highlights. And the first highlight we're gonna add is some thinned down flayed one flesh. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of the skin. Just picking out all of the edges. So 
So with all of that flayed one flesh applied to all of the skin, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm gonna apply this over the eyeballs. Just like that. And so with that done, we're now gonna move on. And we're gonna move on to all the armor. The color we're gonna be using first is some thinned down Thunderhawk blue. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna use this to pick out all of the edges of all of the armor. So with that Thunderhawk blue applied, we're then gonna take some thinned down rust gray. I'm gonna use this to pick out the sharpest points on all the armor. as well as any rivets. So with that done, the armor is all finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Corax White. I'm gonna use this to add a few little highlights to the bright parts of the smoke. Just like that, nothing too crazy. So with that Corax White applied, what we're then gonna do is take some thinned down Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our red. And with that Evil Sun Scarlet applied, we're then gonna take some Fire Dragon Bright and we're gonna apply this to the sharpest corners on all the red, like that. And then on the cables, for example, you can add just a little bit of it at either end. So with that red all finished, what we're then gonna do is take some Screaming Skull, and we're gonna use this to highlight the horns, the teeth, and the claws. So for example, down here on the claws. So with that Screaming Skull applied, it's now time to work on the metallics. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some thinned down Retributor armor once again. And we're gonna apply this over the top of the kind of large pots on the end of each of the weapons. So we've got this one just here, like that. We've got this one up here. And here.
like that sort of thing. But what we're not going to do is recolor in this large tank at the top. Instead, we're just going to do this bottom one here. And this one over here. This is just to add a little bit more shine and warmth into these large areas. Like that. And you can do it on the top one if you want to, but I think it looks better if it's slightly faded. So with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Liberator Gold and we're going to use this to highlight all of the gold. Now, believe it or not, it might look like there's a lot to do, but there actually isn't because we've done that relayer on the large pots. What we're really just looking to do is pick out any edges. Like that sort of thing. So with that Liberator Gold all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thin down Iron Breaker. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the silver scattered around the model. Now I'm just going to work my way up from the bottom, starting with these feet claws, just so I keep it nice and methodical. There is quite a lot of silver, as you may know or may not know, having been painting along. So with all that iron breaker applied, Bone Ripper is now finished. And it looks glorious. So what we're going to do now is move on to Thanqual. Now the colour we're going to be using first for Thanqual is Dark Oath Flesh. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of his skin. Including the tail. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Storm Fiend and we're going to apply this over the top of the armour on his head. Like so. He doesn't love a bit of creative model gymnastics. <laughs> so I'm going to apply this like this. Checking that we've got it all. Looks like we've got it all. Just gonna colour in the rest of that spike as well. Just for posterity. A little edge just here. We just need to pick up. There we go. And what we're also going to do 
is we're going to apply this over the top of his lower robe. So with that Storm Fiend all applied, we're still waiting for it to dry. So what we're going to do, and this might seem weird, but trust me, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Saigor Brown and we're going to apply this to the outside of the robe. Once all that Saigor brown is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to apply this over two areas. So firstly, we're going to apply this over the top of the Saigor brown. Like that sort of thing. But what we're also going to do is we're going to apply the Flesh Terrors Red over top of the inside of the lower robe. Like this sort of thing. So with that flesh terror is red now all applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take Mantis Warriors Green and we're going to apply this all over the top of his horns. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this over the top of his teeth, his claws, the inside of his outer cloak, as well as the rope belt around his waist. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some wild wood and we're going to apply this over the top of the wood of his staff. And with that done, we're then going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this to all the kind of paper and stuff 
that is hanging from his belt. Right under here, you probably can't see that. It's quite tricky to film this bit. So with that done, we now need to make the lower robes darker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a second layer of Storm Fiend. So we're gonna once again, just come in here. And with that done, we're then going to take some shyish purple and we're going to apply this over the top of his dung. With that shyish purple all applied, we're then going to add some Black Legion to the scabbard. And with that Black Legion applied, we're then going to take some Null Oil and we're going to apply this over the top of all of his fur. It's got a little bit of it just here on the arm, like that. There's a little bit of it just here as well. Got the fur on his cheeks. Like that. go and then we've got his hair as well including the large braids and so with that now done we've just got one last base coat to apply and that is going to be some thinned down retributor armor I'm going to apply this over top of all the remaining details. And so with that done, we're then going to add one shade, and that is going to be some Reichland Flesh Shade. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the gold. So with that done, Thanquol is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And he's looking pretty awesome. I did just have to redo that horn on the top of his head and add some Mantis Warriors green over it because it's the same color as the horns. But what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to highlight him up, take him to the next level. And the color we're going to be using first is some thinned down Flayed One Flesh. I'm going to use this to pick out all the sharpest points in all of his skin. 
Now you'll be pleased to hear there aren't that many highlights that we're going to do here. He actually doesn't need very many. And with that done, we're then going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to use this to pick out his eyes. We're also going to use this to highlight his robe. So with all that Evil Sun Scarlet applied, what we're then going to do is going to take some Fire Dragon Bright and going to apply this to the sharpest points on the cloak. And with that done, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this to highlight the teeth and the claws. That Screaming Skull all applied, we're then going to take some Korax White. We're going to use this to highlight all of his white fur and hair. So with that done, believe it or not, we're now going to finish him off with one more highlight. Because the robes are as dark as we need them to be. The armour is already nicely highlighted by the contrast and we don't want to add any kind of brightness to it to take away from the shock of white and green there. So all that remains is to take some thinned down Liberator Gold and use this to highlight all the gold. And so with his base complete in a swampy style, because that's what Kataro wants, and that is what Kataro gets, just as he's gonna get this Thanquil and Bone Ripper. Thank you so much, buddy, for being a member of the War Hipster community. You're an absolute legend. And well, I hope you enjoy this guy, and I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody else. Because it's really, really, really cool. It's a nice model, this one. It's quite old, but it's a nice model. And it's hefty. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me a little bit further, you absolutely can do. Head over to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And you can also become a YouTube channel member, just like this incredible bunch of folks scrolling up on the screen before you. There's a hell of a lot of you. And, well, I can't do this without you. YouTube and Patreon, you guys absolutely keep the lights on and make all of this worth it thank you so much to all of you for everything you do and if you really like this video and you just want to shoot me a little thanks you can click on the thanks button just below this video don't forget to share it like it 
comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all very soon in the next one happy wargaming <laughs>